Imagine a world where an economic disaster is on the horizon. Economists are predicting automation could lead to millions of people losing their jobs, increases in poverty, inequality, social breakdown. The solution? What about guaranteeing every citizen an unconditional amount of money? a basic income without any strings attached. So now you have Silicon Valley CEOs right now calling for a basic income. We should explore ideas like universal basic income to make sure that everyone has a cushion to try new ideas. And I think ultimately we will have to have some kind of universal basic income. I don't think we're gonna have a choice. But here's the thing, the basic income isn't some crazy new idea. It's not even new. Go back to more than 40 years where you can find the President of the United States set to announce a sweeping national program, a basic income for every American. Wait, is that Nixon? Richard Nixon, Republican president, went in front of the nation and declared, oh, let us place a floor under the income of every family with children in America. How could a Republican president nearly 50 years ago be decades ahead of fighting for a liberal social program now backed by the Netherlands? What made Richard Nixon want a basic income? This is Rucker Bregman. He's a young Dutch economist who has been one of the biggest advocates for the basic income. Uh, a basic income is a monthly grant that is enough to pay for your basic needs. So food, shelter, education. Right now there's a growing consensus that automation risks the livelihood of millions of people and that a basic income could help soften the blow. Go back to the 60s and you'll see those same fears about automation killing jobs driving the basic income debate. You know, the computer age was upon us. People were talking about post-industrial uh, America and that that was going to have uh, repercussions for the workforce. So now this was on the heels of the federal government passing food stamps, giving health care to the poor and the elderly. The next big idea to tackle poverty was the basic income. So at that point, at the beginning of the 70s, Richard Nixon said, well, uh, if everyone thinks this is a good idea, you know, let me be the president that makes history. I mean, this was sort of a way to try to steal the Democrats' thunder, to try to get ahead of a popular issue. Nixon's plan was called the Family Assistance Plan, and it guaranteed a family of four $1,600 a year in income. That's around $10,000 today. The plan seemed destined to pass, but then something happened, and this is where it gets kind of nutty. This guy is Martin Anderson. He was one of Nixon's aides and a staunch, dyed-in-the-wool conservative. He saw Nixon's plan as counter to everything he believed and wrote up a report for Nixon to read. And this report and all these quotes, they were about something that happened in England 150 years earlier. So what they implemented is what you can call the first welfare system the world ever saw. It's called the Spin Emlen system, named after the place where it started. And it was sort of a basic income. It was pretty much a unconditional, so all the poor would get it, whether they were employed or not. So there was no distinction between the deserving poor and the undeserving poor. The English government at the time commissioned a report to see the effects of this radical new idea. The results? Wages dropped, marriages were torn apart, chaos reigned. The report gave critics an ideological framework to attack welfare. Without proper oversight, benefits given to the poor wouldn't help them and they would actually make their problems worse. Nixon saw this and panicked. Especially started using a different kind of language. You know, he started to talk much more in the way of, you know, warfare, that we really need to push the poor into jobs and that we, that they are often lazy, etc., etc. This 150-year-old English study somehow ended up changing the course of the basic income. Oh, and it was total bull. Now, the crazy thing is that at the same time that Nixon was saying this, historians were looking again at the original report from 1834 uh, about Spinanland and discovered that actually it was a huge hoax. <laughs> In reality, Spinanland had been, uh, well, it had been a success. It was one of the reasons why there eventually was no revolution in England. So because of this weird old historical report, the president's plans changed. He, he pushed for an amendment and required recipients to sign up with the Department of Labor. Work requirements were debated and ultimately a new consensus around welfare formed with Republicans and Democrats that the poor needed to qualify for government benefits to prove that they're working or looking for a job. And with that, the basic income was swept under the rug of American politics until now. The fact that you somehow had Richard Nixon and the Black Panthers supporting the same thing shows what a 
unique idea the basic income is. Nixon recognized that he saw the basic income as a popular program he could steal from Democrats. So here's the question, could another Republican president who's desperate to pass a popular program and without a fixed ideology, maybe make the same gamble? Thank you.